Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to Hopkins in High School. Field two for today's battle between the Bellingham Blackhawks and the Hopkins and Hillers. Temperature today is 85, and I'll call it partly cloudy because there are some clouds in the sky. I want to take this opportunity to mention eight gentlemen, uh, some of whom I've known since they were in the kindergarten, but watched them play ball since they've been seven years old. Some of them, as many as 200 games, if you can believe it. And those are seniors Timmy Burdick, Andrew Scirocco, Connor Hebert, Matt Lindquist, Anthony Farina, Tommy Leone, and Dylan O'Leary. And they'll be going to Boston College, University of Texas, Austin, University of Maryland, Penn State, Providence College, Tufts, and UMass Amherst, respectively. It'd be somewhat selfish to say uh, that I don't want to see this as their last broadcast regular season game, but fortunately, the Hopkins Hillers have made the playoffs, and so they will play on while Bellingham will go home for the year. Now, I've watched these kids, some of them from T-ball, first grade baseball, all through Little League, tournaments in the summertime, AAU, and high school. So these boys have really and truly done the community of Hopkinton proud. They've done the Hopkinton High School, the third rated in the state, very proud. They've done their parents and siblings proud. And most importantly, they've played with a lot of class and did themselves proud. So again, selfishly, I don't want this to be the end of their high school career, but fortunately, it's going to move on. So for the Bellingham Blackhawks, batting first is Mike Reisfelder. That's a great baseball name. Corey Chiapone, batting second. Ben Euculus, batting third. John Keeler batting fourth, Zach Hildred batting fifth, Jacob Bissett batting sixth, Matt Wilson seventh, Brent Creighton eighth, Jake Houston ninth. The Hopkinton defense will be Matt Lindquist at third base. At shortstop today will be Timmy Burdick at second base. One of my favorites, Jack Whaley. At first base, Zach Sosiski, one of the captains. In left field, Connor Hebert. I'll have more to say about him later. In center field, Tommy Amersoni. I've been pronouncing his name wrong all year. On the mound today is Brendan Kelly, BK. Behind the plate today is Steven Simos. We will be back with the first pitch in a minute. Watching Brendan Kelly finishing up his warm-ups today. The fastball slider change-up guy. Bellingham's record is 8-7 and seven overall. And in the Tri-Valley League, 7-5, and five, so they won't be heading on, as I mentioned earlier. The umpires for today's game are Carlo Barsotti, and doing the bases today will be Jack Ryan. Brendan is one and one on the year with a scant 2.04 ERA. His defense is the reason for not, no decisions, but he's pitched very, very well and will pitch well into the upcoming playoffs. Leading off for Bellingham will be Mike Reisfelder. So does Stevie Simo sends this ball down to second base. They have it around. Have a little mound conference. And Carlo Barsotti will give us the play ball signal. It's nice to see Stevie Simos behind the plate. I don't think 
any of our viewers on HCAM have seen him yet. He's an outstanding, outstanding catcher. You've seen his hitting prowess, but now you get to see his defense. First pitch from Brendan Kelly is up high. 1 0. Jimmy takes Brendan just a little time to get his release point, to get himself into a groove, but he will. And there's a line drive in the center field, picked up by Tommy Amersoni. And there's no B in Amersoni, which I've botched all year. My apologies to Tommy and his family. We have Corey Chiapone batting second. So will Bellingham play a little small ball and have him lay down a bunt? Decent lead by Rice Felder. Ground ball to third. Over to first. 5-3 for the putout. One down. Ben Euclid, if that name sounds familiar, I don't know whether that's a relative, but it's a very unusual last name. I'm not sure whether he's from the Cincinnati area or not, but if he is, there might be some relation between the real Uke, Hopkins, 10, 14 and 5, pickoff at second, nice inside move. Overall, and 10 and 3 in the Tri Valley League. That's why they're going on to the playoffs. Left handed hitter Euclid stares in at Kelly. It's a nice strike on the outside corner. Euclid is hitting 349 on the season. Their top three Ricefelder, Euclid, and Chiapone are all hitting 350 or above. A team batting average, nice, nice curveball. Euclid's way out in front of it. Are hitting 254 as a team. So if you take out the 349, the 360, and the 383, the rest of the squad is, well, woeful. Here's a curveball, slow hopper. The Timothy Burdick throws the first in time, two down. Nice job of charging the ball by Timmy B. Hitting fourth is John Keeler. Let's check his stat line. He's hitting 244 for the season and is hitting cleanup. If that tells you anything. Brendan staring in at the signals from Stevie. Beautiful curveball. He's going to that regularly. He must be feeling that pitch. It is a field pitch. It's not just a grip it and rip it like a fastball is. That's about the fourth. Pours that one in for strike two. I don't think Keeler was expecting anything but the fastball. There's the pitch. Curve ball, ground ball in the center field. That will plate Reisfelder. Excuse me. Yep, Reisfelder. Zach Hildred, number 22. So now the uh, Hillers find themselves in an unusual spot behind in the first inning. A runner on first. Does it look like he's too swift with his feet? Foul ball out of play. And doesn't have a greedy lead over there. I'll let you know when the base runner's got a really greedy lead. Or when I'm going to sniff out a stolen base. Brendan rubbing the ball up. Looking in at Hildred. Showed bunt, pulled it back, called strike. 0-2. He's behind the eight ball here. So he's got to get the bat off his shoulder and do something. Not admire the uh, cooking from Brendan Kelly. Fouled out of play. A little late on that pitch. Although most of the hitters today for Bellingham will be late. Maybe except for the top three. 
Euclid's Rice fell there in Chiapone. Keeler taking a small lead up first. There's a curveball, and he got caught looking. Strike three, scores one to nothing, top of the first, heading to the bottom. Hopkins in batting order today will be leading off Ben McKenzie. Hitting second today is Stevie Simos. Hitting, oh, excuse me, Zach Sissi is going to hit second. That's a switch. Stevie Simos, third, Anthony Farina hitting cleanup. The most valuable player in the recently played Pedroli tournament that Hopkins and won for the first time since 2005. Jack Whaley, fifth. Matt Lindquist hitting sixth today. Brendan Kelly. Connor Hebert, Timmy Burdick. Batting last, Tommy Emersoni. Mike Reisfelder. We'll get his pitching line. Well, McKenzie. Waits for his pitch. He's going to have a feeling. Throws a nice strike. He's ready to hit like a lion after some raw meat. Reisfeld has got a 6.04 ERA. A little tapper in front of the mound. Reisfeld picks it up and throws the speedy Ben McKenzie out. One out. Well, Reisfelder's record is a one and three with that high ERA. So he has been racked around a little bit. Zach Sosiski up to bat. Had some nice hits in the um, Pajoli tournament. Made it into the Metro West Daily News in a photo display. Ball. Zach hitting 318 on the the season, primarily a contact guy, can go to all fields, is team captain with Tommy Leone. Here's a strike, one on one. Reisfelder winds. An off-speed off pitch outside, 2-1. Zach will take a walk. He's never afraid to draw a walk from a pitcher, make him work. Him being a pitcher, he knows what that's, that's, a, that's all about. Here's a ground ball to first baseman. A little high hop. Reitzfeld the covers. Second out. Now, here's an interesting hitter, Stevie Simos. Doing some research today. Chris Bryant of the Chicago Cubs um, is a perennial MVP candidate. It's a Theo Epstein pick. Has been hit by a pitch nine times in 212 plate appearances. Conversely, Stevie Simons has been hit 13 times in 64 plate appearances. So for you, those of you at home that have their calculators out, you can put in the comments section how often Stevie Simos is getting hit by a pitch. It's just absolutely freaky. Rice fell the pitches. Stevie Simos takes a pitch, evens up the count of one and one. Now, if you watch the last, if you watch the last broadcast, Stevie hit a ball out to right field, which I thought was a grand slam. Swing and miss there. The right fielder didn't put up his hands as if it were a ground rule double. And the base umpire waved his finger, signaling home run. Later, there was some discussion, and they ruled it a ground rule double. So if you go back and watch the previous game, they, there is a pop-up at the infield, sky high. Shortstop waiting on it, and the ball drops. Looked like that was a shortstop's ball, but he 
clearly lost it. The second baseman lost it. Everybody lost it. And Stevie Simos is on with two out. He's always a threat to steal. I think he's got seven swipes on the year. Tied with Ben McKenzie. Back to first. Now he takes a greedy lead. I think he's been picked off once this year. I might be mistaken, but he's a very greedy base runner. Get, that's not a very good move, and Stevie was back easily. Yes? We're going for the stolen base leader. Team lead. Stevie Simos swipes a bag. He will have it. He's getting that extra little quarter step, and he's going. And not even a throw. That's his eighth swipe of the year, and he takes the team lead away from Ben McKenzie. They say, uh, as far as base running, speed kills, and Stevie possesses a lot of speed. And he will get a huge lead at second base. The only thing that can get him is an inside move by the pitcher because the second baseman is just patting his glove out there. His ground ball through the hole and third short. Simos rounds third, hits that pillow, comes home, slides in safely. No. Oh, home plate umpire. Oh, Coach Simos is not happy with that call. We'll have to slow mo it, but I thought he was clearly in, that it was a great throw. And that uh, ends the inning. One nothing. Top of the second. To the top of the second we go. Jacob Bassett leading off for the Blackhawks. And we'll get the stat line on Mr. Bassett. He's hitting 257 on the year. We'll have to face... BK, Brendan Kelly. I don't know where Brendan Kelly's dad is. He usually hides somewhere when his son is pitching. He usually nibbles his nails off or he doesn't want his son to see him. So I'll look out for him. And there's a little fly ball to right field. Anthony Farina camped under it, makes the catch, one down. Next up for Bellingham is Matt Wilson. He's hitting 118 on the year. Ball low. One eighty two with thirteen plate appearances, foul out of play. Stevie Simos giving chase. Doesn't have any extra base hits on the season. Wilson. So Brendan ought to just bear down and blow it by him. Takes takes a ball upstairs, two and one. Hopefully, uh, we'll keep this. That ball is dumped into right field on one bounce to Anthony Farina. Clearly didn't uh, pull the ball, just hit it where it was pitched. So that was a good piece of hitting by Matt Wilson. Brent Creighton. Wilson taking a real short lead over there at first base. The decent secondary, that's right down Broadway. It's a beautiful pitch. Now he's ahead in the count. No balls, one strike. So umpire, base umpire calls foul ball. 0-2, oh runner on first base. Won the nothing, Bellingham Blackhawks over the Hopkin and Hillers. A 
little chirping from the Bellingham. Ball high upstairs. One and two. Creighton hitting 154 on the year, the senior. As I mentioned before, they're hitting 254 as a team, but oh, that's a strike. And he's gone. Grabbing some of that new Hopkins and Pine over there. Two outs. Man on first base. Doesn't look like Wilson's a threat to run. So we have a fly out to Anthony Farina. Little base hit by Wilson. Ooh, that was some gas. Creighton strikes out. Jake Houston. Trying to do something with Brendan Kelly. Stevie Simos popped up. Threatening to throw down to first base. But it doesn't appear that the runner will be taking off. He's got a one and a half stride lead. Secretary bunt. Foul. Off the beautiful backstop down here at field two, Hopkins in high school. It's 0 and 2. Oh, it's 1 and 2. Pardon me. I make mistakes all the time. Runner will be off with the pitch. It's 2 out. No. That's a strikeout for BK. Heading to the bottom of the second. Heading to the bottom of the second, Jack Whaley, Matt Lindquist, and I don't know, it's going to hit behind him. He hasn't popped out of the dugout yet. Brendan Kelly will be hitting third this inning. That should be a treat. He's got long ball power. Jack Whaley, primarily a line drive hitter. He's got good speed. Takes a pitch outside from Reisfelder. Reisfelder staring in for his signs. Foul tip. One and one. Reisfelder has one complete game out of five starts. And he has a 6.04 ERA. Oftentimes you hear the term slugging percentage. Of course, you've heard about batting average. Nice pitch on the outside corner, one and two. Slugging percentage is the number of total bases, as, as an example, single equals one, a double two, a triple three, and home run four. There's a ground ball up the middle, hits Reisfelder, picks up the ball, throws the first, and gets the speedy Whaley. So you take those total bases and you divide by the number of at-bats. Of course, you don't include sacrifices, a sacrifice fly, a hit by pitch, Stevie, or an error. And that's how you come up with a slugging percentage. As with a couple of top hitters for Hopkinton. Ben McKenzie is at 566, and Stevie Simos is at 562. So neither today has increased their slugging percentage. Lindquist waits for that pitch. It's in the dirt. Corralled by the catcher. Jake Bassett. Here's a ground ball, the shortstop. Easy hop. Throws to first, and he is safe. No, nope, he's out. Got blocked out by the catcher. Thought the first baseman pulled his foot off the bat. Here comes the big lefty, Brendan Kelly.
Sorry about that ding. Maybe getting a score from field six. That ball looked a little low to me, low and outside. I'll check and see if Reisfelder is tipping his pitches. He didn't tip that one. So it's a fastball way upstairs. Score down the uh, girls' softball game is two to nothing. Hopkinson is a ground ball. That's going to get in the hole between first and second. Kelly takes the turn at first and holds right there. Bellingham girls softball, they have a tough, tough team. And that's going to be a battle. But the Hillers are up 2 nothing down there. And the Hillers are down one nothing up here. Tom Nappy will come up and relieve me from play-by-play -play duties when that game is over. Brendan has a slight lead over there at first base. Connor Hebert. There's a ground ball. Third base. Speedy Hebert is out five to three. Score is one to nothing. To the top of the third we go. Brendan Kelly finishing up his warm-up pitches. He's gonna face Eisfelder, Giappone, and Euclid. Still haven't seen Brendan Kelly's father down here. He's got to be in the back of the bleachers, the side of the bleachers, somewhere. Brendan is about 6'2", 210 or 20. This winter he threw 88 miles an hour. And he sits between 84 and 86 for his fastball. Quick glove tap on the mound. An attaboy, throw strikes. And here's the leadoff hitter, Mike Reisfelder. I love that name. Crowd starting to fill in. Stands behind home plate about half full. The fans down the left field line. Brendan is ready and throws a curveball on the first pitch, and it's a beauty. He's got a feel for that today. I'm trying to look at somebody for some affirmation, but there's nobody here except for our great cameraman, Bob Hamilton. And Reisfelder went fishing for that. Looked like he was casting out a Zebco rod because he couldn't get that with a, uh, oh, we'll say a 10-foot pole. And there's a curveball. Count still 0-2 to the leadoff man, Reisfelder. He's hitting 360 on the year. Four doubles, beats that one into the ground down the third base side. Still 0-2. The rumor has it Coach Simos was hit by pitches a lot in high school and perhaps in college. Perhaps that's where Stevie got it from, some inherited characteristic. That's a ball outside, one and two. So on top of the third, it's a very, very warm day in Hopkinton. There's a curveball in the dirt. Stevie Simos tags Reisfelder. Having the ball around, one down. Corey Chiapone. He'll step in to face Brendan Kelly, who seemed to pick up his groove. Just a little bit outside, one ball. Chiapone hitting 383. One triple, one home run. Six ribbies. I don't know where he got that home run, but he's not quite big of stature, much like myself. There's a pop-up. Zach Sasitsky over, and he makes the catch. A difficult play with his back to home plate. Yeah. 
Coach Simos yelling out the defensive alignment. Ben Eucala steps to the plate. Lefty. He's asking his outfielders not to give up a double. Ball in the dirt. 1-0. Euclid sitting 349 on the year, 14 ribbies. Four doubles. Ball's hit to left field. Connor Hebert is camped under it. And that's the third out. Heading to the bottom of the third, one to nothing. Bellingham Blackhawks over the Hopkins and Hillers. Leading off the bottom of the third inning is Timmy Burdick heading to Boston College. Bet his brother can't wait for him to get there. Well, they will have some uh, dinner table battles up until early September. Who's better? Who's stronger? Who's got the prettiest girlfriend? Who's got a nicer smile, etc. Timmy was voted a student with the nicest smile at the recent seniors dance foul tip, which drew a little chuckle from the uh, students and parents attending. It's a nice, nice little thing that the seniors put together every year. And this time it was at the Putnam Club down at Gillette. Each mom submitted about five or six photos that were ground ball right over our way but I've got a uh, chain link of friends in front of me so I'm not I'm not as scared Timmy was a cute baby so they brought pictures as infants toddlers middle schoolers and every every kid had their photos in alphabetical order put up Connor Hebert interestingly enough you know all kids develop at their own speed, but I don't know why. His mom sent it a picture of him in Pampers. I know they're popular. Counts two and two on Timmy. Ball in the dirt. Catcher Wilson touches Burdick. Problem is, was Connors was like five years old. And he's 19 now, so maybe he wasn't able to get into kindergarten on time. I don't know. But he's a good kid. He's off to the University of Maryland. All the graduating seniors are good kids. Ben McKenzie looking to do something here. Ball up high. There's no white car for him to hit in center field today, unfortunately. One of the best hitters in the Tri-Valley League. Was last year, is this year. Curveball. Just inside. 2-0. and I'm a little ahead of the scorebook. Scoreboard, excuse me. Ben possesses excellent power and excellent speed on the bag. And that's a strike on the outside corner. 2-1. Tough to see the Celtics go down to the Cleveland Cavaliers the other night, but they had a great season. Hillers will be in the playoffs. And there's a line drive to left field. That gets down. And that's a total base. That adds to his slugging percentage lead over Stevie Simos. One out. Zach Sosiski to the plate. We'll be looking for Ben McKenzie to get a greedy league. And swipe a bag. He's already got a two shuffle lead over there. Will he go on the first pitch or wait? Pick off. Ben dives back in. Looks a little closer than it was. So he may be able to get in another little half a half a step lead. And he's leaning a little bit towards second base, and it is not a throw over. Back in time. Hand to the outfield side, of, outside corner. The right field side of the bag where he should go back. Another pick. 
He's back in safely. Obviously, Ricefeld that did his scouting and knows that uh, he's got to watch out. Ricefeld the sets. Strike to Zach Sisitsky. Sign wasn't on for a steal. Of course, it could be Ben McKenzie has the green light all the time. There's another throw over. You know, these aren't uh, going to be college players, so you keep picking over, something eventually can happen bad. Like an overthrow, and McKenzie would end up at third. In that case, there's another throw over. That one was high. Maybe they ought to have a pickoff rule, no more than five in a at-bat. No more than six mound visits in the major leagues now. There goes Ben, and uh, he's going to be in safely. Always looks for the ball so he could take an extra base. So he is now tied with his brother, Stevie Simos, for the team lead in steals. Each has eight. Zach in a position to tie the game with one swing. They are playing very, very deep in right field for Zach, even though he goes to the left side quite often. Left fielder is coming in at his own peril. Now he backs up a couple of steps. Zach had a good Pedroli tournament. And there's a ground ball up the middle. And that's going to be fielded by the second baseman. And he throws the first. And he's safe. I wish Dr. Bar Bartoli over there would get out of my way or sight line on ground balls hit to first. But I totally missed that. I'll have to talk uh, to the home plate umpire in between innings. Zach may press Reisfelder here with a lead. Not really a threat to steal. Stevie Simos at the plate. Now, please don't get hit, young man. We'll have to adjust our stats. Strike, ball in the dirt. No advance by Zach. Bassett looking around for the ball and it was just behind him inside home plate umpire's feet. That's uh, Reisfelder's seventh or eighth pickoff throw over there. It's one thing to keep the run game in check and distract yourself from throwing a pitch. Look over by Reisfelder. That's a ball upstairs. One and one. Stevie's hitting 417 on the season. Why don't you get up above 350 pickoff? Zach in safe. Once you're over 350 in high school ball, you're really whacking it. Ricefelder stares in for the sign from from Bassett. And there's a ground ball. Picked up on a bounce. Three unassisted at an RBI to Stevie Simos' resume. That'll be number 13 on the year. Run out to second base, Anthony Farina. Once again, the MVP of the Pedroli Tournament held this past weekend. Absolutely fantastic kid. Doing his mom and dad a favor by going to Providence College this year and not following his brothers to TCU. 
So they'll get to see Anthony more often. Maybe. Ball outside. 2-0. and Anthony's a big, strong boy. When he barrels one up, he hits it a long, long way. Way upstairs. Not even close to being tempting. Three balls. No strikes. Oh, Ricefelder went to the breaking ball. That's a little nervy being down 3-0. That's 3-1. Called strike. Just tell he was itching to swing at that pitch. Now he's seen it. He's seen everything that Ricefelder has. Oh, what a cut. That's the end of the bottom of the third inning. To the top of the fourth we go. The top of the fourth we go. We have found Brendan Kelly's dad, Porter Ricks, from the show Flipper. Brian Kelly was the star of that show. He claims that that's who he was named after, but that show was in 1963, so the math doesn't work. That's a ball, just a little bit high. Spoke to the home plate umpire earlier in between innings, and he said this is the third time he's seen Brendan and the best he's seen him pitch. His curveball is just really nasty. Ball picked up by Timmy Burdick. Slight bobble. And the runner is safe. There must be some nails in that skin of that infield. That area has been haunted for the last couple of years. So we will give that an E6. Won't give the uh, won't give the Bellingham player a base hit on that. So we'll take away his base hit. Up high, first pitch from Brendan. Very warm day today. No sky or no clouds. This is a pop up down the right field line. Zach Sosinski and Anthony Farina giving chase. The ball's out of play. Count is even, one and one. So I had to do a lot of research on that Brian Kelly and the Flipper show. Well, that's a hit by pitch. That's very uncharacteristic. Hildred makes it down to first base. So score from field six. The girls have got a shutout going against Bellingham, seven or nothing. Bottom at three. Wow. There's a foul tip. Hildreth was heading down to second base. Well, thank God Brian Kelly didn't take his story to the nth degree. Uh, Brendan would be nicknamed Flipper. But it's now BK. He's going to be something next year. There's a pickoff move. Runner back in safely. Jake Bassett. Oh, a feeble swing off that Kelly curveball. The Kelly curveball, that's what it is today. He's throwing that one very, very effectively. That's what I see, and that's what the home plate umpire sees. Counts 0-2. 
Hildreth taking a lead off first. That just missed. I thought the umpire was going to ring him up. Sometimes all my wishes don't come true. Counts one, two. One out. Top of the fourth inning. This game moving along a little bit quicker than the girls' softball game. That's a ground ball just under the glove of Jack, Zach, Jack Whaley. Excuse me. That ball's cut by Timmy Burdick. Good throw from Anthony Farina. There wasn't anything cheap about that hit. There hasn't been a ball pulled to the left side yet except for that ground ball. Everything to the right field side. Matt Wilson up to the plate. Brendan grabs the rubber, rubber, cleats in. Ball's foul at the plate. Stevie Simos gives Brendan a new ball. Will Bellingham put on a play? Will they send a runner? No, they don't. There's a ground ball. Off Brendan Kelly's glove, over to first. They get the uh, they get the hitter, but a run scores. Scores two to one now. So he score that play. One six three. If Brendan was just an inch taller, he would have grabbed that. Stare at the runner back at third and throw him out at first. Runner at second. Two out now. Ball blocked by Stevie at the plate. That's how to block pitches. Not backhanding them or forehand them. Is to get on your knees, stick your chest forward, or move laterally side to side. There's a play on a second. Run it back in safely. Infielders not keeping the runner close. There's no chance for a pickoff over there. Ran into the plate. I like that pitch. The umpire didn't. Though. Counts 1-0. Oh, Creighton at the plate. The 2 1 game. Ball in the dirt. Gets away from Stevie. Throws down to third base. And he's just in there underneath the tag of Matt Linquist. Nice throw by Stevie Simos. I didn't think that was going to be that close. But it, take a, it took a great throw by Stevie to make it close. Two outs. Brennan's just going to worry about the hitter. Sitting at 154. So definitely not Wade Boggs' numbers. Well, he threw that one like Wade Boggs was up. Counts three balls and a strike. Draws ball four. Not sure whether Stevie Simos is going to go out and talk to Brendan. Is going to be a, a pinch hitter for Bellingham. Giramini. Don't have a first name on, on the young man, but got a number. He's hitting 071.
071. The 20 plate appearances is a strike. The one hit on the year. So. That's what Brendan ought to do is give this young man the gas pipe and put him away and get back into a nice cool dugout. Saw the umpire's hand move up slightly. I thought he was going to ring Jeremini up. Brendan will have to do this all on his own. Sit down. Take a seat, young man. And we're going to the bottom of the fourth. Bellingham two, Hopkins and one. Down to the bottom of the fourth we go. Bassett's going to throw down a second base. They'll have it around the horn. It'll be Jack Whaley, Mac Lindquist, and Brendan Kelly to start things off. Uh, sorry to see uh, Jack Whaley uh, leave town. We got a few more games if we're able to broadcast to see him. Nice kid, really good baseball IQ, and he'll be something down in FLA for uh, w whichever coach he plays for. That's a good job, Lair, spilling your vitamin water. Jack waits to pitch. Ball in the dirt. Coach Simos imploring his hitters to come on, get with it, pay attention, swing at good pitches, make contact. There it is. That's going to be in the right center field. Gets down, bobbled a little bit by the center fielder, and there goes Whaley in a cloud of dust in the second base. I guess he took that teaching from Coach Simos pretty well. Matt Linquist looking at Coach Simos. A play may be on, perhaps a bunt to move the runner over. Matt going to Penn State, he's gonna be a Nittany Lion. He's going to be fierce and growling. Ball outside. Matt hitting 333 on the year. No homers, couple of doubles. Three doubles. No home runs. But he does have home run power. Ball foul right at home plate. Count is one and one. Reisfelder is keeping his team in this game and has them up by score of two to one. Infielder's not keeping Whaley close. There's the bunt. It's hit. I hope Matt's all right. He got hit in the toe. It's a dead ball. So Whaley will return to second base. And here comes Special K Kelly. He hit a ball around 360 feet at Mellis. Hitting 281 on the year with one triple and one bomb. First baseman playing behind Lindquist. Brendan a little out front on that one. May want to hit his dad out in center field. He's been spotted. So Jack Whaley getting a big lead. Infielders playing way back. Inside, one and one. Any ball even dumped into the outfield, Jack Whaley will score. All he hears is the clap of the glove. Oh, makes an attempt. Now Whaley's caught in a rundown. 
The catcher doesn't throw, and he gets back in safely. So there was a bunt attempt. No contact, and that's a strike. One and two. That is really a surprising call from Coach Simos. He's got a big, strong guy up at the plate who has better than warning track power, but maybe that's why he put it on. The infielders were playing way, way back. Ball upstairs, two and two. That's what it had to have been. He saw the infielders playing way, way back. Figured Brendan could move the runners over to second and third, and he does nothing but K on that one. Here comes Pampers, Connor Hebert. Going to be wearing that big turtle shell next year. He made a catch in the Pedroli tournament that was something to behold. Apparently the bases were loaded. A bomb was hit the left field. He turned one way, turned the other way, and made an unbelievable catch. So said his teammates. So say the parents. So say the writers from Metro West Daily News. We got one down, two on. Connor hitting over three. Inside move by Reisfelder. Jack Whaley back easily. Connor sitting 303 on the year. And he's blessed with great speed. Inside move backs off the out, backs off the rubber. No play, no throw. If anything today, the Hillers have got into Reisfelder's head a little bit. That's a strike. Now Connor's in the hole a little bit. 0-2. Reisfelder can do anything he wants here. He hasn't been particularly sharp with his breaking pitch. That ball's popped up high over towards first base. And that is dropped. Once again, the umpire blocked my view. So Connor lives for another day. Count is still 0 2. Score is 10 to nothing at the bottom of the fourth inning down at the girls' softball game. It was supposed to be a battle, but it's getting close to a mercy. Mercy is 12 runs after five innings. Ball way outside. One and two. I don't think Coach Simos expected a close one today, given Bellingham's record of seven and five. There's a ball hit over the short. Nope, caught by the shortstop. Nice play, young man. Way these scampers back to second. And here comes Smiley Burdick. A few of his classmates have come down and watch him perform. Now's the time to do it. Reichfelder is not an overpowering kid. Timmy looks at that pitch. Strike one. Expected to see more alumni here. We've gotten out of college. Ball in the dirt. Whaley's going. Throw down to third base. And he is safe. Matt Lindquist advances on the throw. We got a swipe for Jack Whaley. Tying run 90 feet away. Count is one and one on Timmy B. Coach Simos always teaching, no matter what. He coaches to the last out. That's a strike on the outside corner. Now Timmy's in a hole, one and two. He should be sitting on fastball. Ball. 
Reisfeld is pitching a good game. I don't know where that over six ERA came from. Figures don't lie. People do, except for the people that are figuring. We still got more time. It's only the bottom of the fourth. And there's a ground ball down to third base. Third baseman picks it up and gets Timmy Burdick by a half a step. Great play by the third baseman. And to the top of the fifth we go. To the top of the fifth we go. Looks like it's going to be Reichfelder. He's pitching in an outstanding game today. Giappone behind him and Ben Euclid. First three hitters Brendan Kelly will face. So they are top heavy in terms of average. And there's a nice curveball that Reisfelder just tipped. Reisfelder hitting 360 with four doubles. Now he's in the hole, 0 and 2. Brendan really toiling out there, although he hasn't thrown a lot of pitches. The 2 1 score. It's a scorcher. Just missed. Brendan threw some gas on that one. Just got to get a little bit of fire to it. That's a curveball. Fouled off. Count remains one and two. I'll agree with the umpire. He's throwing really, really well today. Especially with the Acker. Will he go back to back with the Acker? He does. Sit down. Reisfelder is whiffed looking by BK Brendan Kelly. One out. Chiapone up. Another 300 hitter, 383, four doubles, one triple and one homer. That's three curveballs in a row. That ball is hanging up out in center field. Tommy Amersoni gets the put out. Score that F8. Got Brendan got quick two outs here. Here's Euclid. Kind of weird saying that name. He definitely has hair. He's not bald and doesn't have a goatee. So Euclid 349 with four doubles. There's a ground ball over to second base. Whaley gets the ball over to Sosinski and records the out. So at the end or at the end of the top of the fifth. We'll be back for the bottom. To the bottom of the fifth we go. Ben McKenzie, Zach Sosicki, and Stevie Simos do up. Spoke again to the home plate umpire about Reisfelder. He said he was not that overpowering, and he's only thrown one baking pitch. But the score, 2-1, to one indicates he's throwing like Nolan Ryan. So this should be the inning that the Hillers make something happen. McKenzie staring in. Ball outside. Here comes a fastball by Reisfelder. He's not tipping his pitches out there. I was wrong 100%. He was grabbing something inside the glove, and he was trying to grab for a seam. There's a ground ball in the hole between short and third. Single begins the inning for the Hopkins and Hillers. The 
Here comes the captain, Zach Sasitsky, patrolling to the plate. Will Ben McKenzie take over the lead in stolen bases from Stevie Simos? They're both tied with eight right now. And Reisfelder picked over about six or seven, five or six times the last time Ben was on first base. Probably knows who's over there. And there he goes. Zach swings and misses. And Ben is in there easily in a cloud of dust. So he takes over the Hiller lead in stolen bases. He's got nine swipes. Some discussion over here as to whether there was a foul tip or not. So the umpires are going to talk it over. One coach is smiling, one coach is not. Whatever they've done in that little meeting, we'll find out in between innings. So with a runner in scoring position, Zach Sasitsky has a chance to tie things up. There's a ground ball, fair. Down the right field line. Here comes McKenzie. He'll score easily. Zasitsky rounding first base, heading for three. The ball is cut off by the second baseman. And that's a stand up triple. Uh, Zelmo Zasitsky. Score is tied up. Deuces. Now Stevie Simon definitely doesn't want to get hit by a pitch. He wants to put the Hillers in the lead. Stevie, one of the best hitters in all the Tri-Valley League. Everybody knows it. He's got a great eye. Takes a look at that one. Leaves it alone. Ball one. Zach just creeping down the line at third. Rice fell the pitch in from the stretch. Stevie calls time. He'll do that. He is a crafty hitter. He knows the game really, really well. In other words, he's got a very high baseball IQ. And there's a ball hit in the center field. Very deep, way back, way back, way back. And that ball is off the fence. Here goes Stevie around second. Zach Sasitsi scores and two straight triples. Back-to-back -back triples for the Hillers. Score is now four to two. It's three to two, actually. And then E. Farina has a chance to uh, play to run. Anything in the dirt. Stevie's a very aggressive base runner. Anthony waves at that one. Doesn't make contact. It's one strike. Ball upstairs. Anthony jackknifes away from that pitch. Wonder if the heat is getting to Reisfelder. He hasn't recorded an out yet. Oh, headhunter. Anthony was able to get out of the way of that pitch. Oh, he's going to take it on the coconut, one or the other. Bullpen activity for the Bellingham Blackhawks. Ball way outside. Counts three and one. Coach is going to come out for a little conference. We will be back after this short break. Coaches discussed what he needed to discuss with Reichfelder. Three balls on Anthony Farina. 
probably the discussion was just throw strikes. Will you? There's a ball hit in the right field, way up in the air. Right field, a challenge by the Sun, and he makes the catch. Tagging up from third is Stevie Simos, and he scores easily. Now the score is 4-2. to two. RBI for Anthony Farina, one of my all-time faves. Jack Whaley steps to the plate. Nobody on base, one out. Just got a little piece of it. Count is 0-1 on Jack Whaley. Reichsfelder winds, throws. There's a line drive base hit. Left field by Jack Whaley. He keeps creeping up with his on-base percentage. Nothing like he was at the beginning of the year. He's starting to really bring it as he gets comfortable at the varsity level. Matt Linquist to the plate. There's one out, pick over. Whaley back safely. Score is 10 to nothing at the girls' softball game, but it's in the fifth inning. They score two more runs. Tom Nappy will be up, and the mercy rule will go into effect. That's a strike on the inside part of the plate. Whaley getting a lead over at first. Not a huge one. The pick over. He's back easy. Some pitchers have that dummy move where they just throw a ball over and lull the base runner to sleep when they have a quick move. And there's a line drive caught by the third baseman over to first for a double play. And that's at the end of the fifth inning. It's 4-2, to two, Hopkinton on HCAM. Top of the sixth inning. Bellingham has a two-run deficit. Starting off the inning. Keeler. Hitting 244 in the season. Brendan hopes to repeat last inning. He was real efficient, got in and got out. If you want to follow, for those of you at home, the playoff schedule, if you have Twitter, Hiller's Baseball. If you want to follow the girls' softball, it's at Hiller's Softball. And look for a scroll on HCAM. Counts two balls, no strikes. Ground ball in between short and third. Keeler rounds first. So Brendan is in line for the win after that last inning. Back-to-back -back triples, you rarely ever see that. Zach Hildred, sophomore at the plate. Hitting 244. There's a ground ball to second base. Great play by Whaley. Throws to first. Gets him out. He, Jack Whaley just laid out for that one. Got it in his glove and threw over to Zach Sasitsky. Score that 4-3. to three. Jack's going to have to have his mom, Noel, throw that uniform into some OxyClean or something. That is one dirty front. Curveball. Just missed. Oh, a runner on second. One out. 
catcher Jacob Bassett. There's a throw behind the runner. He gets back in time. That's a pretty good inside move Brendan has. That was closer. That should have been. Brendan stares in for the sign, winds, fires. There's a beauty. Right down Broadway. Counts one on one. One's across the board. Coach Simos barking out some signals to the infielders. Who's covering the bag? And there's a ground ball. Easy to Timmy Burdick. Throws over to first base. There's two down. Let's go that six to three. Matt Wilson to the plate. Got two down, a runner on third. Ball in the dirt. Picked by Stevie Simos. Makes it look easy, doesn't he? Wilson hitting a lofty 182. That's fouled off Stevie. Coach Simos gets the ball for his young son. Very cordial today, flips it to the umpire. Carlo Barsotti, who will take a look at that play at the plate on slow motion. There's a curve ball, just inside. Brendan's not afraid to throw that thing today at all. And really tight, 2-1. Fans are starting to fill the stadium. Ball in the dirt, blocked by Stevie. Counts three and one. Late arriving crowd today. That sun high in the sky on those metal bleachers for those wearing shorts might not be the nicest. Ball beaten foul on the third baseline. Fielded by the Bellingham third base coach. Matt Linkwist has the ball in. Brendan. Now the count is full. With two out. Now. The runner will be moving. As soon as he lifts his leg. That ball's hit foul. As soon as Brendan picks up that leg, that runner should be moving. I don't know what he was waiting for, but he's in foul territory, so if he gets hit with a with a ball over there, he's not going to be out. If he's in fair territory and he gets hit by a ball, then he is out. There's the curve ball. What you looking at, young man? That's nice inning for Brendan Kelly. Gets Wilson looking to the bottom of the sixth. We go Hopkins in four, Bellingham two on H cam. Bottom of the sixth, we have a pinch hitter for Hopkinton. Big red, Robbie Paglialuca. He is a team favorite. Possesses that knuckle curve. If you've been following Hoppy and Hiller's baseball. Love to see you come down for a playoff game. If Hopkinton secures a bye and then in a home game, come on down, support the boys. Reisfeld is still out there and there's a ground ball, third base foul. He wasn't looking. He went up there hacking. He's not going to get cheated. Pags takes a big cut. Now he's down the count. 0-2. Oh, 
Probably will be a big part of the uh, pitching rotation next year. There's a curveball, a little dribbler at the second baseman. Robbie Pags, not a speed merchant. He's out easily, four to three. He's going to be fun to watch next year, Rob Pagliuca. Or Robbie Pagliuca. Or Robert Pagliuca. Here's Connor Hebert. That's a ground ball. Picked up easily by the shortstop, but it'll be a tough play, and he gets Connor by a, a full step. Timmy Burdick strolls to the plate. Reisfeld has got two down quickly. Here comes the future Eagle. He's due for a base hit. Ball in the dirt. That brick wall behind the catcher has been a blessing. A lot of the balls bounce right back to the catcher. Count is one and one. Hopkinton Athletic Department must be saving a bunch of money on lost balls with that 22 foot high net. And Timmy is down the count, one and two. Ball upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs. Two's across the board. Timmy's going to think early. There's a ball going to drop behind second base, and it is caught by the shortstop over the shoulder. So, heading to the top of the seventh, Brendan Kelly heading out to the mound. We'll be back in a moment. Heading into the bottom of the seventh, just informed that the girls team beat Bellingham and it was supposed to be a battle, 12 to nothing. So the mercy rule was initiated. 12 runs after five or six. And that game ended an inning early. So I'll expect my broadcast partner, Tom Nappy to be foul ball. Coming up shortly. Creighton's leading off for the Blackhawks in their final at bat today. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Brenda just moving and grooving. There's that curveball. Just missed. One and one. Now Creighton's got a guess. Is it going to get the yacker or am I going to get the, the heat? It's a ground ball to third base, picked up by Lindquist, throws over to Zach Sosinski, and there's one down. Score that play five to three. Two more outs for Brendan Kelly. And we can go home. Hope you enjoyed my nonstop talking today. It's not as easy as it sounds doing color and play by play, swing and a miss. That's a nice guess. That's a pinch hitter. This is Fitzgerald. He's hitting 077. 077. Works the count to one and one. Owen Fitzgerald. Nice Italian boy. Ball in the dirt, two and one. Blackhawks are not playing for anything, so they may be playing for pride here today. It's outside. Three and one to Fitzgerald. You got a feeling he's just looking for a walk or begging for a walk or hoping for a walk. 
Strike two. Brendan wasn't messing around. Fitzgerald, the junior. Is the curveball. Just missed inside. Brendan wanted that pitch. So Fitzgerald draws a walk with one out. So there doesn't look like there's going to be a swipe of a bag. The Bellingham coach says to the runner, Fitzgerald, your run means nothing. Don't get doubled off on a line drive. He's got to go on a ground ball. If he gets picked off, the, the uh, Bellingham coach will lose his mind. I think you can pick up the Bellingham coach. Uh, Eisfelder, a leadoff hitter. Ball low. Brett is unhappy with himself. Just behind one ball. It's a strike, a high strike. I don't know whether I agree with the umpire, but we'll take it. One and one. Everything's a strike for Brendan Kelly. Here's a ground ball to Burdick, a short, flips to Whaley for one, over to first, double play, the ball game's over. And the Hopkins and Hillers beat the Bellingham Blackhawks 4-2 to two at field two at Hopkins and High. All right, Coach, uh, gr a win today against a uh, good Bellingham team. Uh, can you talk about your team's performance out there today? Um, that was a typical uh, Hopkinton Bellingham game. That's the, the team and program I've had the most respect for. They're always the uh, they're a team that everybody looks up to. They're going to be making the tournament. I'm confident for like their 25th year in a row. He does. Uh, TJ does a tremendous job, and you can never just show up and beat them. You have to execute. Um, that was a good high school baseball game. You know, we played well. Uh, a lot of different guys contributed. Really happy with the way uh, Brendan pitched today. It was his best outing of the year, and um, could not be more proud of his team. You know, 11 and three in the league, and 15 wins is an accomplishment that uh, I don't think many people thought we could do early on. And, and coach, after a bit of uh, I don't want to say um, too rocky of a start, but you know, some bumps and bruises in the beginning. This team really has seemed to uh, come together and just be one of the most dominant teams in the TVL. Uh, can you just talk about the chemistry of this group and what it's like to coach them? Oh, it, it, you can't speak any more highly of them. We we talk about painting a picture uh, over the course of the year, and we don't have to. It doesn't have to be a beautiful picture at the beginning. We have the growing pains, um, and we try to get better every day. And and they epitomized that this year. They really. We were two and three at one point, and I think we've won 13 of our last 15. Um, but it really isn't about the the wins and losses as much as we were competitive in a lot of games. I think the, the Millis game was a uh, turning point for us where I think they got a little bit comfortable. We talk about being relaxed but not comfortable, and they got too comfortable in that game. And um, I was out coached, they were outplayed, and, and I think every team needs that spark, and we had it. And it's been great. And then the Pedroli tournament is really a, a sp something special that um, can never be taken from them. And uh, Coach, what was it like to take home that title in the uh, Pedroli tournament? You beat a good Natick team and a great Franklin team. What, what's it like to uh, claim that championship? Oh, that's very, very special. We have a lot of respect for the Pedroli family. We love seeing Mrs. Pedroli every year. Um, and it was a, uh, it was really special because, as you know, there's three good teams. You can't win that tournament unless you play very solid baseball. I just love the belief that they had that they could, that they could win um, against those teams, and they did that. And like we said uh, today, a lot of people tell them, you know, it's a new season, we start fresh, nothing you did to this point matters. And I tell them, I've never believed that. Everything they've done to this point matters. Nobody could ever take their record in the TVL, their TVL title, their uh, Pedroli championship away. They'll always be a team with a, their graduating year and the banner. And um, it's been a success. Everything now would be a bonus. So. Well, Coach, we're looking forward to the rest of the season and the playoffs. Best of luck, and we hope there's many more games to come. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much. Thanks, Coach.